Well, it was two bits of song. The, um, it was Pete's idea to stick it together. The bit I had was like help, <laughs> but it's basically in essence mostly the, cor the chorus bit. You know? And he is. He just had this other bit. He said we should stick those together and that. We got in the studio and we were doing it. And I said I don't like this. It's too corny. You know. I really didn't like it. You know? And that's if you listen to our version of it. It's kind of. It's earthy, but I mean, I, I'm not really trying on it, you know. And uh, just disregarded it. And then we're working with Todd Runger in her studios. We were doing um, Straight Up, I think it was. And then Nielsen comes in and says, I've got this song that I want you to hear. And I didn't know, and I knew Neil, who Nielsen was, but I didn't know him personally. And he came in and introduced himself. And he took us to the mixing room. I said, I want you to hear this. And then he played without you. And, it, that really showed me what you can do with a song production-wise and, you know, with a good singer, you know. And but it just blew me away. And I, and I said, well, where did you pick it up from? And he said, well, I thought it was an old Beatles tune. And I asked Richard, Richard Perry, to find it for me. Um, he said, it went through all Beatles albums. And they were stumped. He said, I've heard this, I've heard this song somewhere, you know. He had it in his brain. And they, they said, we started going through your albums, you know, Beatles, you know, Badfinger. Try that. And they found it. He said, and we came to England album with just this one song. You know, we didn't have any other songs. You know, we just went around publishers and whatever else. We built this album around this song, he said. I said, well, I thought it was corny. He said, well, what do you think of it now? You know? And I was told, uh, that's why I don't mind ballads anymore. <laughs> how many how many copies of that self of Nelson? I don't know, I really don't know. I mean, it keeps me in pocket still, you know, and there's still a big lawsuit in Apple. Just, it's made a lot of money since since it's been a hit too, you know, with the K-Tells and the classical pops. It's been on a lot of things, you know. And how many people have recorded it now? I have no idea. I have no idea. A lot of people have recorded it. What are some of the versions apart from Harry's? Um, well, the English people, Shirley Bassey, uh, someone did it the other day. Roberta Flack did it down on TV. I was I was knocked out by that because I really think she's a great singer. You know, it was on the Tom Jones show, <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there really depressed. And I think, what the fuck am I going to do here? You know, and this this comes on. Roberta Flack comes on. I think, oh, that's, that's all right. I'll watch her. I could like her. You know, and then she starts doing it without. You know, and hey, felt a lot better. Wrote a song after that. You know? Things like that. Do you? The world of good, you know, when you when it, you need it, you know. It must be a nice feeling to have written, I mean, a real standard. I mean, not just like any old pop song, but I mean, a thing yeah. that like, will probably be being recorded in 20 years' time. Well, that's a good feeling of longevity. Um, it gives you self the impression when you're in self-doubt that you can write songs, that because it still goes on. People play it on the radio still, you get, like, the local radio here, they have people's all-time top six, you know, and the, the average housewife will ring in, you know, and that'll be amongst them. And it's, you think, well, somebody likes it and it's carrying on, mm. you know.